Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today's phrase is to be rigged. Now when something is rigged, it is believed that it's operated using deceit or some kind of malicious behavior to promote a desired outcome. Now, let me just give you some examples to show you what I mean. So if we say, for example, we had an election today to vote for our union leader, but I honestly believe the election is rigged. The job vacancy has been advertised in the newspaper, but I believe it's been rigged. We all know who's going to win. The football match was definitely rigged. I don't think the football players were playing in their usual way today. The competition to win a holiday in the local newspaper has been won by an employee of that newspaper. That was definitely rigged. If something is rigged, it means that the outcome is fixed. It is known from the beginning who was going to win. Now, this can apply to anything ranging from government elections all the way down to company elections or club elections. And it's what we say. We say things have been rigged. Now, it's very common to hear this in the media, and we're going to go through a news report that's appeared today. Just before we do that, I just also want to say that rigged has many other meanings too. So you have to be quite careful. As far as I remember, it's a bit of a boat, the rig. It's also a setup of a communications table. If you have a radio for communicating and an aerial and a whole workstation, it's often referred to as a rig. And finally, if you, for example, um, set something up, you can rig it to happen at a certain time. We've all heard, for example, um, statements like uh, the car was rigged with explosives. It means they were all set up to detonate. But right now we're focusing on one meaning of the word rig, and that is uh, about when something is operated in a malicious way. And you'll hear this a lot all across the media, especially these days when everyone's very suspicious and things often are not as transparent as they should be. So it says here, TV jobs at the BBC have been rigged. Now, this isn't new. There's always been accusations against the BBC that uh, women are paid less than men. I think that the BBC is such an old establishment that it's sometimes unaware of some of its practices. Despite evolving and changing, there's still accusations that the way it operates is sometimes rigged in favor of particular people based upon gender or cost cutting. And of course, uh, once there's one accusation, usually that prompts many others. So the headline says, TV jobs at the BBC rigged. So let's read through this. It says, female BBC journalists have begun legal action 
against the broadcaster claiming a job application process was rigged. Now, just to give you some background to this, our BBC News channel has made some sweeping changes recently. The BBC News used to come from the UK and was broadcast across the world. And then there was a separate uh, BBC called BBC World, which had its own presenters around the world. Uh, the BBC decided one day that it was going to merge both of these services. And as a result, many people here in the UK, many of the presenters were told, well, you have to apply for your own job. And they were also allegedly told, but don't worry, it's fine, you know, there's a good chance you'll get it, we will look after you. But then, of course, they had to leave. So we're going to read about that now. So Martin Croxel, Karen Giannoni, Cassia Madeira and Anita McVeigh have launched a court case against the BBC, alleging they were ignored for chief presenter roles after BBC News and BBC World News channels merged. The four, aged 48 to 55 at the time, claimed at the London hearing, the London court case, they suffered age and sex discrimination. The BBC is resisting the claims that the women lost out after a rigged recruitment exercise. So they've begun legal action against the broadcaster. The court case hasn't been heard yet, but they apparently were able to lay out their claims before the court case starts. Now, these women all applied for their own jobs, and that's quite common here. If there's a restructure, you're told, well, your job is still there, but you have to reapply for it because uh, we have to prove that you're the best person. And these women are saying that they suffered discrimination on the grounds of age and sex victimization. Uh, they're saying, the newsreaders say that they asked for equal pay claims in the past, and that's why the BBC treated them in the way that it did. They say that they have been demoted since the merging of the channels. Three of them are facing a sizable pay cut, with a fourth having had her pay cut for half of her job. And they go on to say that no men and no women younger than them suffered the same treatment. Now, different news sources are reporting this in a slightly different way. Some of them are saying that these women had previously been told that there really wasn't anything to worry about, um, that their jobs would be safe. And there's others which are focusing more on this court case that's coming up. And apparently other presenters who are not named here have confirmed that they already have won amounts of money from the BBC. So, for example, Sarah Montague confirmed that she had won 400,000. Uh, there's another one in the news today who's claiming that uh, she was awarded by a court 700,000. And in 2021, the BBC said that it had spent more than a million on legal fees fighting equal pay and race discrimination cases 
brought by staff. It says here in documents, the women said that the editor of the news channels privately assured four chief presenters, two men and two women, that their jobs were safe, but admitted she couldn't say much for legal reasons. So, yeah, there's all kinds of complications with this, but the court case is about age and treatment uh, as well as their gender. It's very interesting, um, but, you know, sometimes once one person wins an amount of money, uh, everybody else jumps on the bandwagon to see how much they can get. These news presenters are very well known and they're kind of like uh, household names. That means that it's names that we all know. And it's rather sad to see them doing this, I think. They're not the first and they certainly won't be the last people to take the BBC to court over some kind of discriminatory practice. The BBC is actually funded by something which is called the TV licence. And if you have a TV here in the UK, you have to pay £200 every year just for having that TV. Now, this is very controversial. Even if you don't watch the BBC, you still have to pay the TV licence. It's a little bit strange because they even have these little trucks that go around with aerials that can detect who has a TV. And, of course, they have a register of who doesn't have a licence. And many people try to evade or dodge paying the license by looking out for these little trucks. They look like little Google vans, you know, those little Google trucks. And it's very odd because even during COVID, the TV licensing people were still around trying to force people to pay. Um, so, yeah, it's very controversial when things like this come up and... Uh, the BBC are often in the news saying they don't have enough money or they, they're questioning their future. And, uh, well, they haven't quite realised that in order to survive, well, you have to provide a really good service. The BBC has a wonderful archive of old TV shows. So I'm sure that brings in a lot of income for them. I don't know. But um, it's like all of these other old government departments who never quite understood much about privatisation. We've seen the post office scandal. The trains now are going to be brought back under public control. That's what the government's saying anyway. So the BBC is just another example of how people are scratching their heads thinking, well, how do we move forward in an ever-changing media environment? So, yeah, so that's the latest. Many people are saying the jobs there are rigged or have been rigged and uh, they're not alone. I'm sure there's other companies which are the same, but modern companies, of course, would be well aware of the dangers of uh, not looking into these things. Well, that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this. See you soon. Bye.